except when it's not, uh, because we only broadcast part of the time, and I'm just doing some patter here until Twitch. All right, Twitch says we're live. Hello and welcome to the stream. Okay, um, last time we tried to compute, well, let's go ahead and look at the problems again. Um, we're sort of looking at two separate problems, which it turns out um, are not really the same problem, but, I mean, they have similarities. One is, if, you're you know, if you uh, go on a great circle route from A to B, uh, and you have a point X, what's the closest you ever get to X on this route? Uh, we need, like, a formula for that. Uh, there are methods to find it, and I think we looked at some of those methods last time. But, but the goal here is we want to sort of answer this question um, sort of completely. A lot of other people have sort of answered it um, by saying, here are some methodologies you could, in theory, use. I'd like to just solve it so, you know, here's the answer as opposed to here's some help. Um, now, the other, um, okay, now this is, a ver this is pretty much the, uh, the, again, the same question. How do we find this distance between a given point X and the great circle between A and B? Now, unless I've gotten rid of it, I haven't, good. This is actually in GIS. Um, but the question I was actually going to answer originally, let's pretend, uh, was you want to calculate waypoints between a departure and destination. Uh, I don't know if anyone's created a nice diagram for this yet. Um, which seems like it's very similar to this, but it's actually a little bit different. And here's the reason. Um, you don't necessarily want all your waypoints to be like right here or right here. You want waypoints to be sort of evenly spaced along the route. So what we're doing is we're saying we'll go one-tenth of the way here, or whatever, and then look for nearby, uh, his waypoints are come from a, a fr from a list. So we look at everything in the list, see what's closest to this one, and say that's your waypoint here, waypoint here, so on and so forth. It turns out that problem is easier. Um, I mean, y we're, we're going to brute force it, so it's only easier because we're going to brute force it. Um, but that, that problem is easier, and we're going to be looking at that problem uh, today. Now, just to make things more fun, Let's do it in a language I don't really understand, which is JavaScript. Yesterday we got close to doing this in Perl. Um, the, and, you know, that works. Um, the sort of problem with that is um, it's not a very portable solution. Um, I mean, if the guy has Perl, which he probably could get, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If I do it in JavaScript, um, you know, people can build interfaces around it, and they won't, but they could. Um, people can do, like, sort of any sort of thing they want with it. And, and maybe we could even put it on a map or something. We're not, we're not going to, but I'm saying these are all things we could do in JavaScript. And then I could actually post it to Google Pages. And I'm going to put that as a to-do, because uh, I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, not, sorry, <laughs> GitHub Pages, not Google Pages. Um, because it's pure JavaScript, so there's no, uh, there's no server side required there. And as much as JavaScript sucks, that is one of its nice advantages. Okay, I was going to do some maintenance work, which is why it says random time-wasting tasks. But I don't think... Um, I, I, I got bored with it, actually. I was going to say we don't have time, but we have all the time in the world. I just got kind of bored with it, so we're not going to do that. But we will do it later. Um, and if you want to read up on them, it should be in Git, or you can just look at your screen now and see what it's saying. Okay, um, so now the we're going to follow the... Uh, we'll go ahead and bring up a, a replit for this in case anyone wants to join me in coding, um, which is more of a blind hope than anything else. Um, so how are we going to find these waypoints? We're going to follow the standard programming strategy for this. The first is we're going to say to ourselves, you know, someone else must have solved this problem. Let's find a library that does this for us. Second, we will find the library, install it, takes a little bit of trouble, I mean, it's never good, and with JavaScript, there's an additional problem that uh, there's a difference between server and client libraries, although it's very hard to know that that's the case because uh, the server side of Java is JavaScript is called node.js, which sounds like it's just a JavaScript file named node. Very, very bad design right from the beginning of the language when it was NetScript uh, to when they tried to call it ECMAScript, which is its formal name. It sounds like a skin condition. And now that it's, you know, most people refer to it as JavaScript. Still, very, very bad language. Um, but we're going to, uh, we're going to use it anyway. And so th step three will be, after we've installed the library and run it, we'll realize it doesn't actually do exactly what we want. 
Uh, so then step four is we'll end up writing the routine ourselves. Step five, we will brood over the fact that we have wasted time trying to use the library uh, when in fact we ended up writing the code ourselves. That those are the standard steps you need to take for programming and we will now commence. So the first thing we'll probably do here is, let's see if I want to pin this, this, this. I don't think I want to pin the 3D calculator. So the first thing I want to do actually is let's go to Replit and, uh, you know, let's go ahead and create a little, uh, create a little place to put this. Hello, I've been here before. What the hell? I don't remember my password. Stand by while I get my password from another place. The magical other place. Um, and I can't cut and paste between the damn things, which always pisses me off. Um, and I'll just click show so you can all see it and know what it is. Nope, just kidding about that. Yes, I do want you to save it. Um, hello, hello, hello! The password list... The password is Black Cock, according to Fierce Crocodile, who's a wonderful person and comes into this channel often, you know, uh, so uh, that's, that's okay. The password is not Black Cock. Um, because they say you should never make the password something that you, you really like or love because people will just guess it right away. People look at me and think, oh, black cock. Um, plus it doesn't have any numbers in it. So I think black cock 15, you know, with a quotation mark in it, 15 inches. But again, that, that would be too obvious for me. So the actual password is different from that. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new REPL for this. Um, What's good is they, they give you all this stuff here, and it's really not useful. I mean, you can't even click on this to create a new REPL, but whatever. And, oh, maybe they put these in order. No, they don't even appear to put these in order. And we're going to call this uh, Twitch Waypoints. And it is public, which is fine. In fact, that's why I'm creating it. Um, and there we go. We have now created it. So... Not a heck of a lot going on right now. Um, so the next thing we do is we look for the library that will give us uh, waypoints, or will give us some some way of computing waypoints or whatever. Th there's more to do here. We th we have a file here of airports and stuff that we need to upload to here. Um, but let's let's go ahead and uh, find the useless library first. And you know, there I could put a search bar here just in case everyone's wondering. I know I could put a search bar here, but it's easier just to type it into the address bar and not bring up a separate bar. JavaScript waypoints library. I'm going to put in client side because it'll totally ignore that and give me server side libraries anyway. Waypoints is a library. Okay. 83 results? Seriously? What the hell? This should be a very... You know what? The, the problem here might be... Um, that we need just sort of a more general, um, a general geography kind of, it's not even really geography, I don't know what to call it, but, but let's be a little bit nice and try to find something that's uh, turf. And I've actually used turf before, so, um, so I'm going to be cheating a little bit by using turf. I'm, I don't know if I've used it on the stream before, but I have used turf before. Um, and it can even do Voronoi diagrams, which is probably what I should have used it for earlier, huh? And let's see, waypoints. No. Okay, so um, getting started. Okay. And as always, with most of these allow you to uh, pull it directly from npm cdn, so you don't have to load it locally. But we're going to be nice and go ahead and load it locally. Um, ooh, nice warning here. Uh, it's 500 kilobytes, so maybe you only want to put in the stuff you need. Uh, of course, the answer to that question is no, we're going to put it all in because, let's face it, we hate, we hate people and we want them to load as much crap as possible. All right, I'm going to try to find, um, I know I have a copy of turf uh, uh, min.js somewhere, and I'm pretty sure it's in my BC GitHub. So let's take a look here, and then we'll find that some of my files are still missing. I really need to fix that at some point. Um, yeah. And there it is, maps turf min.js. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to grep to see. Now, I'm, now this is where I'm wasting your time. 
I'm gonna grab to see if I've used turf before, and I'm sure I have actually. Hmm. So what files have I used it in? I think maybe yeah, it's just itself. So, uh, despite this, I believe I have used turf.js before. Okay. So we're gonna learn turf.js, or I know it a little bit as we go along, and I'm almost sure we're gonna find it's not what we need. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about that because we will be doing this very correctly now. Um, so let's get, now the two things we're going to need here, we're going to want turf, I'm going to go ahead and upload turf min js. And to make life easier, I usually try to copy files that I'm going to upload um, into the temp directory so I don't have to go anywhere else. The other file we're going to need for this is the airport facilities directory. The, and uh, unfortunately, I'm almost sure that, uh, I mean, handling a bzip2 file in replit not going to happen. I mean, I can't do it. I'm not saying uh, other people couldn't do it. Um, and I'm going to call it TSV because that's what it is. It's a tab separated value. BZCAT, go to here. And I don't think it's that bad in terms of, of length. Um, well, I probably meant to do LS minus L. Um, so that is like about 10, 10 megabytes. I don't think Replit will have a problem with it. So let's go ahead and uh, upload some crap and temp slash it should be the only thing that begins with capital N in temp, there it is go be uploaded, okay um, turf.min.js and now we're going to pretend like we're real programmers by putting it in the subdirectory okay Now, for some reason, we've popped up with a big, huge thing saying this plugin crashed. That, that's really pretty cool because um, the plugin is so apparently it's just not going to run. Let's see if it runs. Oh dear. Well, right now it doesn't do anything, does it? Oh, hang on. Um, uh, so this would at least print something on the on the. Um, I wonder if it crashed because it doesn't like my file, but let me go ahead and reload it. Magic is happening. Okay, let's see if this... Uh, I got rid of my rep that sucks, so I don't know if... But I think everything else stayed, stayed on. So let's see if this works. Yay, it works. Okay, so we've hopefully... I'm not going to open this file because it's 10 megabytes, uh, but hopefully we, we got it. Um, another way to have done this would be to convert this file here, which let's take a brief look at it. Um, it's hideous. We looked at it yesterday. Uh, I could convert it to JavaScript, or I could even write a Perl script that trims, down, trims it down to what we actually need. We don't need all of this data that's here. In fact, um, a lot of it is total garbage. A lot of it is empty. Um, but again, we're going to try to do this all in JavaScript uh, without using Perl as a helper script, although I'm already beginning to doubt myself on that one because really we don't want to be passing around 10 meg files if we don't have to, and in this case we don't have to. Um, plus, the, the, uh, plus, I'll do more. Um, the program I wrote yesterday in Perl could very easily be used to convert this, I instead of you know, printing out results, it could very easily instead print out a JavaScript file uh, that is much shorter and much easier to uh, read for JavaScript to read. Okay, so we have this, we have this, we have, wait, my, oh, whoa, 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 where did lib go? Not cool. And so I guess I, we lost a little bit there. Turf. There we go. I think I'm actually in BC get maps though. I think somehow this is defaulted incorrectly. Okay. Going to be a little bit slower this time, moving turf to lib. Everyone happy? Okay. Um, okay. Honestly, now that I've made such a big <laughs> deal about it, I almost want to change NFDC uh, facilities, TSV, to something easier. One problem in reading in JavaScript is um, it's asynchronous. Um, script source, I believe, is synchronous. But uh, reading in JavaScript is um, 
uh, reading a, f a file in JavaScript like this one is asynchronous. We've dealt with it before and we can deal with it again. Um, and then we have to look at the tabs. So you know what? This is another great programming technique where you um, claim that something's a bad idea several times and then you go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me go to the file that um, it's in maps, I know. I don't think uh, there's a ton of crap in maps. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's not going to help narrow it down at all. Not geodesic, but uh, waypoints? Hey. Okay. So, what we're going to do here. Um, so, basically, this just grabs the longitude. Uh, and several identifiers um, and parses them to their decimals which is good which is what we want and then so right here we actually start making calculations that we're now going to shift over to JavaScript so we're going to say we're going to go ahead and do a die here um, even though we should really say you know we're not using the program it's not really a die uh, what we do want though is the FAA info and we're going to print that out in a very JavaScripty format so how do we do that um, well, you know, actually, I think there's code here where we loop through, yeah, there is, actually, um, where we loop through FA info. Um, so we'll use that code. Obviously, we change it a little bit. Um, we don't care about the distance. We just care about uh, the data. So let's see. So if, if there is an advantage to knowing more than one, if there's an advantage to knowing languages like Perl, it is that you can get them to help with other languages. Um, and I've done this with, because I don't really know C that well, so I try to convert my files to be as smooth as possible for C, uh, not the original format. And for JavaScript, I guess we can do the same thing. So not right now, I just want to make sure that we are, um, we are on top of what we're doing. So we're just going to do this to make sure everything's working. And it is, by the way. This is, again, a waste of time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize that. So let's make sure this is doing what we think it's doing. Or of course it is. Uh, yeah, it's giving us the codes, and then it's giving us the, the, the hash value, the, the, the pointer to the hash. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to craft this into a JavaScript thing. Um, let's see here. Into a JavaScript object and then assign it to a hash. Good stuff here. And I got a number that JavaScript uses curly braces for hashes, uh, straight braces or straight brackets for arrays. We don't want an array. We can't put this stuff into an array. Okay, so let's do this. My object equals blank. Um, actually, let's go ahead and make this a list because we're going to go through all the keys. So for dollar sign $i, keys, dollar sign $FAA, info of dollar sign j by the way do you love the way we've reversed the loop now so that j loops through the keys and what is this is a the hash that is okay and for right now we're just going to um you know what i think i'm okay with doing this so we're going to push on the object you have to be really careful here um Actually, don't, actually, we don't have to be really careful here. Uh, uh, did I do something where I kind of got rid of the quotes earlier? Oh, I think we already did that. I think we handled that in the routine that creates the original hash. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put... Um, and if this works correctly, it's going to look like the inside of a Java object. Um, if it works incorrectly, that's going to be probably what happens. But let's take a quick look here. One step at a time until it works. Whoa! I'm always surprised when it works. Okay, so... Um, okay, got to be a little bit careful here. Uh, one of the purposes of doing this is we want to get rid of uh, unnecessary value, so we're going to get rid of this. Uh, we could put it in there. It's not. It's not. It's not. It'll work. But um, so I think the way we'll do this is 
Yeah, let's do this. If the key looks like ARP little something, I mean, there's really... We're not going to use either of the ARPs, the longitude or the latitude. By the way, this is completely stupid, but this is an interesting way to match longitude and latitude uh, that is completely unnecessary. But if this is happening, we'll, we'll say next, we don't want to put it in our object. Uh, we don't want to put it into our JavaScript object. Um, so let's see what that does. This, this should get pretty close to where we want to be. Um, okay. One problem we have is we can't do stuff like this in JavaScript. Um, and even this is kind of, well, this is, I think we put that in quotes, we're okay there. We can't have emptiness here, so, oh, actually, if we put it in quotes, it won't be empty anymore. So let's do that. And so this will be, I'm going to use hard quotes here because if we do have apostrophes in some of these names and we don't want that to break. Um, this, this, this. So now we should have something that looks closer to something we can use. Yeah, good, 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 good. Oh, except we now have quotation marks around latitude and longitude. Uh, Latin LNG, and I think I, I can deal with that. I think JavaScript's going to let us get away with that. It's, it adds a character, two characters to latitude and longitude, four characters to the object, but that's not hideous. Um, so what we want to do here is, I'm just going to print it now because we're getting really close to, well, we'll debug it actually. Um, join comma space object, that'll give us the inside. Yeah. I'm going to just go randomly back and forth on deciding whether I want to print or debug stuff. Okay, that'll give us the inside of the object, and now we need to actually, um, assign it to the, um, to the, what the hell did we decide was the, uh, the, uh, the one thing that's unique. Well, we'll find out here. Oh, actually, it's, it's the key I, so, so we can just do that. Um, no, sorry, the, the key J, that's the, so we're going to say FAAJ equals duh. Um, and again, we could do this in pieces. Um, ta, ta, ta. And there's one thing wrong with this, which is we don't actually declare our FAA as an array anywhere. And ooh, 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 no, no, no. Also, I need to do this. And I, I can use, I think I can get away with using single quotes here. So now let's see if it looks like anything. We're not even going to debug, we're going to do a less. Let's see if it looks anything like JavaScript. Um, I mean, you know, this looks a little bit like JavaScript to me. I think we're okay with this. Uh, if anyone in the audience wants to say anything, and how big is this? Well, we'll pipe it to WordCamp to find out, but it's going to be much, it's going to be much less than 10 megabytes. Um, wow, well it's still 2.8 megabytes. That didn't really help that much. Um, but it is now in a format that uh, JavaScript can understand, provided that provided that before I do any of this crap, I print out, I go ahead and declare uh, FAA as a, as a, um, as a hash. Okay. All right. So I'm sure this is wrong in some way. Um, but let's go ahead and do it anyway and see what happens. Um, stations.js it's it's a list of FAA way it's a list of FAA facilities but that I don't know how to say that so we're going to go ahead and delete this no 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 delete be gone from this place we actually got to look at it real briefly there um, so let's go ahead and upload file uh, slash temp um, there we go stations.js it's not really a library, so we're going to leave it like this. Um, and let's go ahead and script source it here. OK. 
Okay. And this is actually um and I think if Replit sucks print, that means we've we've actually wow. Stations insert a script. Wow. Okay. That we've done this correctly. Uh oh, console error. Unexpected token curly brace. Um and I just realized that maybe I was wrong about how to declare arrays in... Let's just do some testing here. I might be wrong about how we declare arrays in JavaScript. So let's take a look and watch me fail at that. I can't type either, but I mean, that's kind of secondary. Okay. Um... No, console log, not system out println. So now if it fails, we know the failure is occurring at A if it doesn't print out hello. Oh. Oh. Oh, you know what? I think that when you Jesus Christ. Once you start assigning it though, I think you can use you have to use the square brackets. And I should probably see my... I don't think you can do what I just did. Yeah. Uh, I think you now have to use the square brackets. Actually, in fact, I think you can use... Um, yeah. In fact, I think you can use the square brackets here, too. Um, good deal. So we have to pretty much change our freaking program. Um... Bracket. Now the thing we gotta be careful about is that Perl doesn't interpret these brackets by itself. And I'm hoping it won't. Alright, let's see what happens. I'll just go ahead and do an overwrite, uh, redirect bang. And I wanna see if temp, before I send it up to a JavaScript, let's see. FA, that, that actually looks okay, because the curly braces are useful for objects. So this, this actually looks okay. Alrighty, so we'll have to delete you. It's kind of nice that you showed that, but you're still going to get deleted. And then we will upload the new and exciting version of stations.js. Okay, let's go back over here. Let's get rid of our test script. And now let's see if Replit still sucks, like the way it's supposed to. Missing blah after property list. Did I frickin' forget to put a missing blah at the... I did. Uh, no, actually I didn't. Hang on. Alright, let's take a look. Okay, blah, 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 blah. That looks like it's okay. Um... Okay. So now a little debugging trick for you. Um, if the, the whole thing is wrong, then um, the first 10 lines will show it to us. We don't need to upload the whole thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and upload stations 2 real quick. And we'll test with that. And if that's, you know, that, that'll show us whether it's a general problem or a specific entry is giving us a problem. Um, stations2.js and now we just go back over here and say stations2.js let's see if it runs okay crap it does run now we could use a binary search here we could put up like half of it and see if that half is bad if it's not we know it's the latter half or whatever um, but we're not going to do that we are I think what we're looking for is that one of these things has a quotation mark in it somewhere and that screws up obviously that screws up the quotation marks here so let's just say, um, let's just say if, if the thing we're trying to put in there, okay, got to be a little bit careful here. M tilde, I don't, I don't need an M here, do I? Quotation mark, die, bad. Info, and I think that's the problem. If it's not, we're going to have to do a little bit more digging. 
but I think that's it. All right, let's see what this does. Oh yeah, we're just doing this now. Oh no, that we probably need to rerun re the damn thing, don't we? Aha! Pri <laughs> yeah, they apparently have one entry that has a, a PVT as a quoted thing. So what I could have just done here instead of doing all this crap, let me let BC get this just because I'm getting nervous. And I'm also going to do a download of the zip file. Uh, from Replit. All happens nice and magically? Yeah. What I could have just done here is instead of checking to see if it exists, I could have just said equal tilde substitute to null. So we don't even need an if there. So what this does is if there are quotes, it just removes them. And I think that is just perfectly fine. That would have been actually a good solution before I went ahead and looked to see if there were any problems. Okay, now we can get rid of you. Actually, it doesn't matter. You're only 10 lines long. We will get rid of you anyway. Get rid of you. And now we will upload what hopefully will be the correct version. Okay. Let's see what happens. That's kind of strange. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the console. Yay, Replit still sucks, so we're good. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I need to change the back to stations. I knew that was too easy. Replit sucks. We do have a problem. Missing block after property list. Um, I guess I thought these loads were synchronous, but maybe not. Okay, we could bring up stations.js here and look at the highlighting to see what's going on. Um... But Emacs can do this highlighting too, and it's local to us. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, this is about as pretty print as it's going to get. All right. Let's see if at the end it's it's oh oh there's something wrong here. There's some place where the things went uh, from black to um, yep 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 somewhere here we have something that that broke this. Ernie's field. That should not be a problem. Um, unless JavaScript doesn't like having apostrophes because it thinks of them as a second type of quote, which is probably what's happening. So now... Well, you know, I've never really liked apostrophes or quotation marks. Um, so we'll screw them both. Get rid of them both. Uh, redo this. Um, and at some point I'm going to watch this stream and just, or all my streams, and just wonder how much time do I waste doing things um, that I claim are so simple that, you know, I, uh, that they effectively take no time. I'm guessing like half my life. Okie dokie. We're good to go now. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's see. Uh, Replit will stop sucking for a bit now. So we could put our script in... Well, actually, let's do that. Let's put our script in script.js. Ha! Um, oh, did we include... Um, we did not. We need to include our uh, library that's going to turn out not to be useful. Uh, and of course, part of that is me remembering the the frickin' name of it. Uh, Turf min d js. Yeah. All right. Does it still run? Yes. Say what? That should be impossible. All right, maybe it'll, the error was occurring with. Could have sworn that error was. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did I put something in the script? No, I didn't. We had this fixed. What the frick? 
Mm. Okay, well, you know, 900 billion trillion. I say that too often. All right, there's a station JS. Yes, we want to reread it from disk to a different version. Okay, well, see, now it looks like we're, this is all good. This looks like it should load perfectly. I mean, hmm. Actually, there's one thing we could do. We can. Do I have JS? I'm sure I do. Um, we could just do this. I mean, it won't do anything, but it'll tell us if there's an error. Um. Mm. Missing brace after... Oh, 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 what the hell? Where's, why is PVT still in there? What the freaking hell? Alright, let's... Oh, globally. If there's more than one, we need to get rid of all of them. Yeah. One day this will work. I mean, we put quotes around it, which is fine. And... Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. If you're doing more than one, you have to use a... Yeah, sorry. Uh, that was actually trying to remove quotes followed by apostrophes. We want to remove quotes or apostrophes. And this is how you do that in Perl with the little brackets. And, you know, you would, looking at this, you would think I've never programmed in Perl before. And maybe I haven't. Yay! Now it looks like it's going to work locally. Should have thought of that trick earlier. Now, finally, no, no, don't, sh uh, okay. Delete, a delete a Rama. And then upload a Rama. Oh, good, it's right there. Now, play a Rama. Okay, I'm, I'm suspicious because last time it gave us the same thing, and then it decided to complain later. Okay. So, and the whole thing, this all happened because I was going to put in, let me see if I can undo my way to that. Yeah. Gorgeous. I mean, it's doing nothing, but that is gorgeous for right now. Okay, um, so what we're going to do here in script.js, and then I'm going to check the list of users, because I hope I've bored everybody off. Nope, I haven't. Hello, users. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we, um, uh, we want to test turfmin.js, or turf.js. Uh, let's go ahead and console log. The only problem here is going to be that I don't, no, 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 I don't remember <laughs> the names of the stations. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll choose a couple and we'll even choose them semi-randomly. Uh, but, but in, in the command line, not, okay. So we have this guy. Or we don't. We know we have this guy. And we have this guy. So if that works, of course, we'll continue and, and do the, the magic that we need to do with them. Okay, there's that guy. That guy. And um, this should work, so I expect it to fail. Ooh, not an error. Gorgeous! This is exactly what we want. Brilliant. So, just during our testing, we will say that A is equal to this guy, and B, well, okay, no, it's equal to this guy. I don't know why the FFA names them like this. I think it's sadism. And this guy will be, oops, I flipped them. That's okay. It's a very interesting way of doing cut and paste. All right, let's do Control X, Control V. Okay, and now um, we have latitudes and longitudes for A and B. Um, actually, let me go ahead and print those out just for fun. Okay. Hmm, longitudes, latitudes, longitudes. I wonder if they're close to each other. 
Um, no, they're not actually. 33 to 59 here. I think all of these might be in the USA because technically the FAA operates only in our country, although <laughs> God knows. Um, so these th th they can't be too far apart. They, they both have to be in the US. Although I think this minus 161, uh, that's what looks in Alaska. But anyway, so what do we want to do here? We want to um, we want to create 10 waypoints between A and B. Uh, we know where A and B are. We want to now create 10 equally spaced waypoints between A and B. And more importantly, we want to do it using turf, which is going to make it much harder. Oh, actually, hang on. Along. Oh, crap. Takes a lot. Nope. Line string. Not what we want. Um. Oh, this is actually the whole thing. It's just, uh. Okay. Let's see if the word waypoints appears. Okay. This is good. Two points midway. This is, this is good. Um, midpoint. Okay, you can do, do a midpoint. Not great. I mean, that's, we need more than the midpoint, but you know. Um, hang on, is the midpoint of a line string? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, the key word here is geodesically. The midpoint is calculated geodesically, meaning the curvature of the Earth is taken into account. That's exactly what we need. I think for a long, that didn't happen. But the thing we need to look for now is the word geodesically. Take a reference point and returns the point that is the calculation is geodesic. Good. Midpoint. Good. Wow. There's only two places where the word geodesic appears. Um, now let's hope Okay, hang on, rum bearing, that might be, uh, that tells you the direction to fly in. Great circle! Okay, good, 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 good. Whew, so close to failing. Alright, so the great circle calculates great circle routes as line string. Uh, the line feature properties, the number of points, the offset controls the likelihood that the date line the higher the number more likely. Um... Not great. I mean, this doesn't. This re returns line strings, which we could convert into points. But I mean, uh, but this is good. This is good. Um, this is certainly getting closer to what we want. Um, While well, not actually being what we want. Wait, did I? Do these things animate when you get near them? Uh, whatever. Okay. I mean, we could p set endpoints to what in you know, a number to add to whatever number we want, because we're not really looking to draw the great circle. We're just looking for waypoints along the great circle. What bugs me about this is um, what bugs me about this is that there should really be an option to just give us the waypoints without wrapping them up inside of a line string. And I say that as though I really mean it. Um, but of course, we know this isn't going to work. OK, coordinate mutation, transformation. Are these, these are all in here, though, aren't they? Feature conversion. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. These might be useful. Kinks. Yeah. It's a band, by the way, from England. Um, oh, OK, hang on, hang on. Circular arc of a circle between the given radius and center point between bearing 1 and 2. O is the bearing. So let's let's see what they, how they do this. Um, okay, not quite what we're looking for. This actually sort of gives us like an arc, which is what, the, what it says. So I guess we shouldn't have been too surprised by that. Um, line segment new. Line split. Nearest point on... Again, not quite. Well, well actually, that's because we're using not geodesic lines. Sector shortest path, unlink polygon. Um, random interpolation. This might be what we want. Ooh. Uh, no, this appears to be interpolating something else. 
joins, grids, classification, aggregation, meta. Okay. Assertions, booleans, unit conversion. Um, but nothing we really want. All right, so what we do normally here is we're going to go to Google. I'm getting sick of this. We'll get rid of it. Normally what we do is we go to Google, and we will do that here. And I'm going to bet you anything that it's going to tell me th to use the line string formula that we found. Um, uh, Turf.js is kind of how we use it. Turf.js. Wow. First result must include waypoints. Um, um, well, there's some issues here. Um, that's amazing. I mean, maybe I'm using the wrong terminology here. Are these waypoints or um, maybe they're waypoints? Um, oh, uh, apparently Google doesn't like it as the other way. Um, okay. Oh, this is a. Um, it's actually one of those Git communities. I would recommend re requesting a for you from the Mapbox Directions API. Well, that's not what I want. Screw you. Um, navigation route options support for linear flight route. Um, by providing new route option. Okay, that's something they want to create. And um, I get the feeling navigation, yeah, it's not even in there. This is something that is different from what we want. Um, travel by map. Oh good, this one's in Spanish, so... Hoy vamos a usar la turf UAS para calcular distancia en Spanish. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit tired of this and we're beginning to think that... I, I nailed it. That um, the library that we found to help us um, isn't going to work. So let me give it one more shot here. Find waypoints along route. Um, um, ooh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Calculate great circle routes is line string. Calculate great circle. Oh, yeah, we did this. So I guess this is what we could use. Um, I'm fudging here a little bit because I've written a function like this in Perl, and it actually uses an approach that, that is actually pretty nice, different from the approaches we've looked at before, which are all, of course, very ugly. Um, um, but let's give this one more shot and just say, does JavaScript have a way of doing this? Now, there's an off chance that this is literally what we just no, that it isn't though. Calc route. Um, do, does this use turf? Oh no, it doesn't actually. Forgot. This is just Java. So this is just JavaScript, raw JavaScript. Oh my God! Travel mode. No, 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 no. Um, so we probably do need to put the word library in here. We don't want just raw JavaScript. Although technically, yes, I realize the library is just raw JavaScript, but shush. This is... This cannot be... Wow. I am shocked that this doesn't already exist. Um, um, okay, maybe, but we shouldn't have to go to a German site that's like 10, oh my fucking god.
please, please tell me that someone just effed up the source here. Okay. Nope, sucks too bad. Okay, so we are going to go with my method, which I kind of was cheating and hoping we would get to. It's in vclib.pl, and it is called... Um, uh, no, it's, it, it is in this library, but it's called GC route or so, GC stats. So this basically gives you the point that is our way, our percentage of the way along the route that starts at lat 1, lon 1, and goes to lat 2, um, lon 2. Okay, and I think I have a, um, oh, come on. I have a reference here to somebody's method of doing this. Must come on, I must. Nope, I don't. Okay. So the value of t for which is perpendicular to p one c great circle. So somehow I the fuck. Okay. Let, let's see if we can understand what I'm doing here. Which is I did it. So hopefully. Okay. So we convert to radians. Not a big deal. Um, value of t for which vt is perpendicular to p1. See, as, as though that would be helpful at all. Um, the straight line point, but we don't use it, the value through the earth, at angle between two dot products, straight line through earth distance great circle now parameterized by perp plus pl i know i've done this with some uh, this is coming from someone else um, and this is coming from a method where uh, perp and this is coming from the method where the three points you turn into a plane are the uh, the start and end point and the center of the earth not the de not the third point that you're looking at, but rather the center of the Earth. And the cool thing is there. Um, uh, apparently, with way too much effort, uh, you can get to the point that is R of the way along that route. Um, but man, why am I going through all this crap? I mean, this should not be this long. This should be a very simple equation. Um, oh, this might be the cross product, actually, which still doesn't mean anything. VT, which I haven't even bothered to define here. This is good. I like. This shows me that my comments are really, really bad, which you think I'm going to say next, something like, I need to improve my comments. But what I'm actually going to say is, so really, co commenting code doesn't help, so screw it. Why do we even do it? Um, let's see. Um, great circle is now parameterized by this and this. Okay. Once again, I'm going to waste some time here. And screw you, TurfJS, you don't do what we want. Parameterization of great circle using cross product. Because I know the cross product gets involved in here somewhere. Oh, well, god damn it. This is first result. Um... I'm going to make this bigger so I can read it, but that might have the effect of letting you read it as well. Okay, so this is what we do here. We have this AB uh, through the center, and then we make C the perpendicular. Uh, that can be represented by a vector normal to the plane of the great circle. The direction of the vector gives the direction of travel around the great circle. They mean they're using the right-handed rule, A, B, C. Um, a cross B. Um... And on the direction of the vector, okay, that's the fine. Uh, the distance is just this initial bearing. We should have midpoint. Um, there's the gold. Intermediate point at a fraction f along a chord between the points by multiplying the vectors by the fraction. And the idea here is a and b will give you the uh, the vectors. Um, Okay, caution, caution, caution. But this is this is what we need. Um, 
intermediate point on court. See, this is what um, I don't think anyone else is going to have it. Oh, nice. This is what a turf JS should have but doesn't have. Um, so anyway, we can do this. Let's see. Um, we'll even try to understand this. Um, let's see. A great circle can also be defined, but we want to do it this way. We want to do it using um, C hat, which is A cross B, which is a vector that's perpendicular. And then from there, mm, the angle between them is the arc cosine of the dot product, or the arc sine is the magnitude of the cross product, which is not important. Uh, the arc tan version. Um, so the two points A and B, okay, the two points A and B, the midpoint, um, hang on, this does not look correct, because, wow, because this is using a straight line between them. Also, pretty sure this should be a plus b over 2. Oh dear, bad things have happened. Um, so either I'm misunderstanding how he is doing uh, this, um, this computation here. Um, pair of points on the surface, yep. And okay, midpoint, and this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. Uh, unless he's using some other definition of BNA that I don't understand. You, d this is not the midpoint will work out because it happens to be a special, but it won't work out for the intermediate points because the straight line is not equally spaced along the um, when you project it. Um, um, this is bad. I should write this guy a nasty letter. He's even updated his copyright to last year. Um, What's the easiest way to show that a vector through the center of the Earth uh, does not yield equally spaced vectors when you project them to the Earth? That would be really great if it did. Um, but anyway, let's see if we can find uh, somebody who does it correctly. Um, yeah. This be the... I want to find the great circle in the sphere given two points on the surface. Good. The great circle is an intersection of a plane and a sphere, uh, such that the plane touches the sphere's origin, and the two points are on the are in the plane. Um, I'm using parameterized equations. Um, um, did I comment on this one? Probably not. Yeah, this is the gold. This is the gold here. If you and V are a pair of orthogonal ve unit vectors. Uh, is the parameterization of a unit circle that lies in the plane spanned by these vectors. Yes, here's, the, here's where the thing is cool. What you do is you first take the uh, cross product between one of the point, the first point, and the perpendicular vector, no, sorry, the two, the two uh, in the plane, that gives you a vector that's perpendicular um, to the plane. Then you take that with uh, P2, sorry, with P1 again, and you get the vector that's perpendicular to both P1 and and to the cross product, and I feel like I'm just talking into a, a void. Sorry. Um, and then you get the one, and then that gives you the parameterization, and then you figure out how where along the parameterization, um, y you know, where you're going in the parameterization. 
that might actually be even a good solution to uh, the other problem. So, and of course, if they're collinear, it's not going to work. But that's you know, if you're go I think I said that yesterday. If you're going to go flying from one end of the Earth to the other end of the Earth, um, there is no short. Every path is the shortest path. Every reasonable path is the shortest path. Okay. So this I'm excited about now. Um, now the cross product. I think I know how to take the cross product. It's um, it, you can do it with quaternions, but I want to see if Mathix will give me a formula for it. Okay, what does cross do? That's good that it, it has something. Let's see if it actually is the cross product. Ooh. That's not effing bad at all. Um. And one way you can check to see if that actually is the cross product without even bothering to look up, and that is, by the way, the cross product not normalized. It could be bigger than one, but that's, that's easy to fix. And one way to find this out is we could take this and dot it with ABC. Ooh, simplify. It should be zero because it's supposed to be perpendicular to that. Right? And with DEF. And it should be zero also because it's supposed to be perpendicular to that also. Booyah! This is the cross product. That is... Actually, it's probably... It probably is reasonable that that's the cross product. You could have just solved it by doing um, equations and sending them equal to zero. Okay. So this gets us back to um, uh, replit. Now this is this is going to be fun. I'm going to put up bclib and bclib staging here. Then I'm going to edit bclib staging. Then I'm going to forget that I edited it on REPL, but um, I'll try to remember. And we will add the definition of a cross product of two vectors. Fun, fun. So let's see. I think I'm going to go another 15 minutes or so and then give you guys a break by calling it. Um, oh, I need to keep that formula in mind, though. Um, and there's two of those suckers, BCLib and BCLib staging, one of which is more important. Um, the staging file, sadly, is the more important of the two. And then BCLib... Okay, and we will be nice and put them both in the lib directory. Okay, and then we will be actually able to use them if we um, if we actually source them. Lib sash bc lib js and lib bc lib staging js. So, god damn it. It opens them correctly, the angle tags pretty correctly. All right, let's see if there's anything broken in these libs. If there is, I'll be surprised. If there shouldn't be. Okay, good. All right, so now we're in a BC lib staging. Um, let's add it at the very end because I'm, I think I'm being consistent with that. So let's see, we're gonna do some Java docking here. Um, wait. Let me quickly check to see if the cross product is... I don't think it is. Uh, and I bet you there's a library for it. Ooh. Um, see, this is not what we said. This is not cross product, which is different from two functions crossing. Um, good, now we've lost our JavaScript. That is just awesome. Oh, here we are. This actually might be useful for other stuff, too, so this is not maybe, um... Um... You know, I gotta say, this is not, this is not, if this works, uh, this is not bad. Um... And apparently it's the one that's famous enough to get the name and... Oh, wait. Guess what? This is a server-side library. 
Uh, however, it might be that we can use it client side. This is one of those things where life sucks. Um, uh, let's see. Production version. Yep. Okay, this is minified. This might not have any functions that actually require Node.js. And if that is the case, we will go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and move it to BC Git, actually, so we have it. Um, uh, I'll move it into Maps, because that's where we're going to use it. We'll I have a ton of crap downloaded. Um, and if forced to use it in uh, Replit, I'm going to copy it to 10. This, this could be so good, or it could be so bad. Okay. And then we will, uh, let's load it first, because it's going to break. It might as well break early. And now, oh, shiny. Well, I'm freaking impressed. All right, but now we're going to actually console log. Oh, wow. I wonder if I can just do, um, do I need to, def do I need to set it equal to something? Let, let's quickly check this. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't need extensions, dear God. Uh, docs. And I will bookmark somewhere here. I forget. Getting started. Uh, all the stuff no one actually cares about always. Um, and we might need to actually ref God damn it. That's one of my whines is people seem to be very stingy with information now. You have to click multiple times to get it. Well, stop doing that. You're wrong. Um, okay, so the math functionality, so this, very naively, might work. Yep, math is not defined. Oh! Bloody hell! So it's only, comp and this is actually correct because um, these are actually objects. So let's see if we can do this, Mr. Smartass. Find me the cross product between these two. Ooh, that's not bad actually. Um, so minus three, uh, okay. Times one is minus three plus twelve. Minus 9, that's then 12, minus 12, 30, minus it, yep. Not bad, not bad, I'm impressed. So now we can get the cross product between any two vectors. Um, so we've got to be really careful here how we do this. Um, because we're going to need the cross, one of the things we need the cross product of is the actual, one of the result vectors is used in the second cross product. Um, so this is the way I remember how to do it, which is really pretty easy because uh, we get our um, parameterization as an angle instead of as a um, as a as a line. Okay. Now back to uh, let's see. And even though we have a nice function for cross product, we probably still want um, we probably still want to functionalize what we're going to do with the cross product. So, let's see, and let's just make sure we can get the longitude and latitude out of these suckers. Longitude out of one, latitude out of the other, because I am freaking awesome. Not bad. Okay, and now we, we do have a function uh, in either one of these that's called spherical to XYZ coordinates, uh, which is what we're going to do, we're going to use to convert uh, these into XYZ coordinates because cross product requires XYZ coordinates. Um, 
and I forget whether I think this is I'm really terrible about this and I uh, either um, not I don't forget which whether we use radians or not that's the problem um, and I guess partly I don't know if I actually have, have that function so that that's always a good thing um, let me instead of trying to look through this I'll look through on BC get where they're supposedly the same um, let's just do started JS. BC web staging. Okay. Uh, XYZ to spherical. There we go. Well, that's the opposite one. Convert coordinates to uh, spherical. Sorry, we are looking for this one. Spherical to XYZ. Um, oh, good. This is really pure formulas, uh, which does mean we have to convert to radians, uh, but that's not a big deal. Um, and it takes in, oh good, it, it actually doesn't specify that the object that it takes in has to have th and ph values, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's fine, it is a vector. Uh, theta is equal to oh no I'm sorry um, spherical to XYZ of the object where theta is the latitude longitude times okay let's see times degree I've, I've missed defined degree so often I forget whether I still have it defined uh, but let's try that and phi is the latitude of A in degrees. And then we should get a nice vector out of this. Yep, I saw that coming. So I'm going to say BC lib degree because I know I defined it in my library. Okay, not great that X, Y, and Z are all uh, not numbers. See, and I think I know the problem is that a long is actually a string, and I thought we could automatically coerce it um, into a float. Now, a to f is a function that c would use to do this, but I don't know. Oh, really? Oh, it just recognizes the format. I don't think it recognizes. All right, so we're going to go back over here, JavaScript convert string, there we go, the very one of the very first things in there. Um, parse float, that's the magic. Uh, parse int, parse float. Okay. Now, of course, the ugly thing here is, in theory, I could now have the Perl script strip off the quotes because we're basically taking an extra strap to get, you know, to get, um, to get them, to get, to undo them here. But, you know, I don't think this is going to be a huge deal for us. Not going to be a huge deal breaker for us. Now, cool. Very nice. Um, well, you know what? Let's start early. What is a long? I mean, I thought we had that, and it's the correct thing. Um, and I, there's a way to get the type of this, but let's just see if parse float a long is what it is. Okay. So sphere to XYZ here. Um, ah, yes. I'm supposed to also provide a radius, which I never do because, of course, we're just using a radius of one because it's easier. 
but maybe if I provided that it would uh, it would work. That would be kind of nice, huh? And this time I'm going to try it without the parse float because I think JavaScript is nice enough to uh, not force that on you. So here we go. We're going to do it like this. The theta is the longitude times bc lib degree because it's in degrees. The phi is the latitude times bc lib degree. And the r is 1 without any multiplication whatsoever. Booyah. Now booyah. Not great. Now, I get the feeling it's going to fail now, but now it might actually work. Oh, wow. I, am I passing this wrong? So I'm, I'm really not um, great with my directions here, but... I mean, this looks like it should be correct, right? I mean... And then I'm going to do something terrible, which is, uh, you know, put a console log inside a function that supposedly already works. And we'll put a tag in front of it. Um, and let's see what happens. Theta not a number, phi not a number. That would break it. Um, getting the sneaking suspicion that maybe I didn't define BC lib degree anywhere. That's the problem, all right. Well, unless I did it in staging, but I sure shouldn't be putting constants into staging. Oh, there it is. So just wonderfully to screw things up, I made it, you know, camel case degree. Oh, and I also decided to rewrite the constant pi, just as pi. Uh, I need to figure. I need to fix this. This is this is wrong at many levels. I shouldn't be interfering with the math space. Probably should be interfering with the uh, with my own space. And now, no longer in BC lib. Therefore, we no longer. We probably didn't need. Oh yeah, let's do this. Again, I think we do not need to parse the float. And if we do, that'll make one more problem that we have here um, to fix. There we go. Oh, and now we need to probably not be um, not be uh, printing out values in inside of the function. Uh, find. Am I there? Oh, here it is. Yeah. None of that. Okay, run it. Okay, great. And this, by the way, vector has norm of one because it's pointing has radius of one because we gave it a radius of one. So now that was step zero. Um, so that's the a vector, and that is a that is a good name for it. Um, now we of course get the b vector. Also a good name for it is BVEC. B At some point I might wrap these in objects so that the angle you can get it any way you want, but it has a specific measure and you can, you know, instead of it depending on um, instead of it depending on what, how I wrote the frickin' function. But that's not happening today. Okay. In fact, that might never be happening. Okay, run around. Missing colon after property. Yep, I probably meant to say phi is equal to that. Okay. Beautiful. And now, now, 
z because this is going to be sort of the z vector for these things. And this, if this works, this is the bomb. This is where this is where we get started. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Math to JS? Math cross math. So they're 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 using lower cross math to avoid interfering with upper cross math. That's kind of nice. Um, so let's do this. Dun da da da. Oh, fooge. Because what this returns are x colon, y colon, z colon, not an array. Okay. I'm going to shorten these names to be AV and BV. Okay, so this is again sort of the ugliness here. Let AV2 equal um, the array that is AVX, AVY, AVZ. Uh, let bv2 equal the same thing, but for b. And this is why you want to functionalize this stuff. These are very trivial things you need to do every time, and there's really no reason to remember them every time. Uh, so now we want av2 and bv2. And there we have it, a vector that is perpendicular to both av and bv, and God willing is of length, um, doesn't look like it's going to be of length one. No, it might be actually. Um, right, right, because the cross product should be the, uh, the norm of the cross product should be the product of the norms of the original vectors. Say that fast. Okay. What I'm sort of curious to know is if they have a, um, um, a math degree uh, here anywhere because, not a degree as in whether they, you know, <gasps> Oh my god. No, console is not a function. So did they do the thing I wanted them to do, which is put in the word degree there? Hmm. So why is it a... Why is it a possible completion here? Oh, because it knows what I did with the word degree. What does FAA do? I don't think it has to do with the FAA, but kind of interesting. All right, um, been rocking this for about an hour and 22 minutes. <sighs> let's go for a, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and call it a stream for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it for now. I would hope to be back later today, but I might not be. Uh, I can't promise you anything. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, have a pleasant rest of your day.